Incarcinated asks in the Discord. Thank you for being a patron, Incarcinated. Um, when flying FPV, why does the radio link latency matter, considering the video link is always slower and the weakest link is the only thing that matters? Am I not thinking about this correctly? Yes, you are not thinking about this correctly. Um, uh, the weakest link, if you have parallel links, then the weakest link may be the only thing that matters. But in the case of, of control latency, it is a series connection. So what you've got is, um, like imagine a scenario where I need, I need 10 parts to make, um, make something. And those parts are going to be handed from 10 people across the table. And so the first person hands their part, the second person hands their part. Let's imagine that everybody hands their part across the table at the same time. Okay, that's parallel. Now, I can't build the, build the thing until I have all 10 parts, which means that the only thing that matters is the slowest person to hand me their part is the one who's going to hold me back. Because if I have nine parts sitting in front of me and the 10th person hasn't handed me their part yet, I can't start working. So in that situation, that's an example where the only thing that matters is the slowest link. But control link latency is not like that. Now imagine a scenario where I only need one part, okay? But what's going to happen is person A is going to hand the part to person B, then person B is going to hand it to person C, C to D, D to E, and so on until I get it. Can you see that in that situation, the latency of each step is additive. I can't work on the part until every single step but leading up to me has occurred. And if, if one of those steps is slow and the rest of them are fast, it still matters because that slow step is adding in, but all the fast steps are also adding in, okay? So with control link latency, the loop is like this. I see something in the goggles. My brain processes what I'm seeing in the goggles. My brain sends a signal to my hands. My hands move the control sticks in response to what I'm seeing. Those control signals are sent to the flight controller. The flight controller changes the motors. The motors change and the quadcopter begins to move in a certain way. The camera picks up the movement. The camera, the video transmitter, transmits the camera image back to my goggles and the loop begins again. And can you see that that whole loop, the latency of every part of that loop is additive. The control loop latency is the sum of all of those parts. So if I reduce the latency of the control link, that makes my control loop latency lower. If I reduce the latency of the video, that makes my control loop latency lower. If I reduce the latency between the flight controller and the motors, if I make the motors more responsive, so they spin faster, they spin up faster, everything I do to remove latency from that link makes the control loop latency lower. And every bit of it matters. Now, you could imagine a situation where, like for example, how long does it take for the flight controller to process the PID loop? Well, maybe as much as, as little as one eight thousandth of a second, eight, eight kilohertz. Okay, so like that's such a small percentage of the total control loop latency that it basically doesn't matter. But when you're thinking that video latency is between four and 40 milliseconds, and control latency is between two and 25 milliseconds, let's say. Those are 100% right in the same ballpark as each other, and both of them matter. 